Hello YouTubers. Well, some of you have asked me to talk about my motorcycling days, uh, uh, which of course um, started over 70 years ago now, uh, when at the age of 11 I first rode a motorbike and uh, had been thrilled by that ever since. And uh, of course subsequently uh, motorcycling has been my whole life in that I enjoyed all the sort of uh, sporting activities. is that I took part in and subsequently um, I think satisfactorily satisfactorily ran my businesses to a um, a state where I was able to support my family and make a living uh, a living in the world of motorcycling um, I got my first motorcycle um, at the age of 15, a year before I was officially allowed to ride one. Um, but, um, so it's been my whole life, very enjoyable and made an awful lot of friends and, uh, um, and had, has supported me uh, all through my life. Um, but um, all of this happened in the very early days and um, we did have a motorcycle industry in this country before the war which was uh, pretty successful I think but of course during the wartime all those factories were taken over to build guns and tanks and things and all the other things we used to kill each other um, and so after the war um, really there were no motorcycles available uh, and, but by a strange coincidence when I was in town this morning I did see one of these old uh, army motorcycles and uh, this is the picture of it. So after the war a great deal um, of motorcycling was done by not quite people in their backyard sheds but by private people who built their own frames manufactured their own suspension modified the engines etc etc and uh, names like the Rickman brothers and McCandless and Paul Dunstall all people who uh, built their own machines and uh, um, I became very, very interested in the development of two-stroke uh, engines and, and the development of them and uh, that's something that I want to tell you about. But um, the two-stroke engine is, is a very difficult engine to describe how it functions and I think before I try to do that I should go back to probably, and I hope you won't think this is patronising, but go back to describe what the internal combustion engine is. Um, the thing that drives your motor car, your lawnmower, your go-kart and all the other things that it, uh, that it now does. Um, well, internal combustion, I suppose, means what it says, in that the fuel mixture is combusted within a sealed up chamber and the energy from that uh, produces movement that enables you to be driven along. Um, well, there are two types of internal combustion, one of which is called a four-stroke and one of which is called a two-stroke. And uh, the four-stroke uh, is called the autocycle, um, coming from a guy uh, named Otto in 1871, I believe. And um, uh, without a load of diagrams and sketches and all the rest of it, very briefly it, it uh, is like this. Um, there is a cylinder on which, in which there is a tightly fitted piston connected to a rod which is subsequently connected to a crank, very much like the crank on your bicycle. And the autocycle has four distinct phases. The first phase we could talk was induction where the um, 
air is sucked in, mixed with the fuel and uh, fills the cylinder. On the next stroke the piston moves up and compresses this uh, mixture uh, where it is burnt and expands, pushes the piston down again and on the fourth stroke the piston rises again to extract all of the uh, all of the exhaust gases. Now in a four stroke this is done in various ways by mechanical valves that uh, open at the appropriate time to let in the fuel and subsequently on the compression stroke the valves are closed, the, the mixture is compressed and on the exhaust stroke a mechanical valve is open to extract it. So it's a very sort of simple concept I think, um, sort of in the trade um, this induction, compression, ignition and exhaust we always refer to as suck, squeeze, bang, blow. So you'll sometimes hear people talk about oh that engine's got a lot of bang or something. Uh, so that is how the four stroke, uh, the four stroke works. Um, to describe the same cycle in a two-stroke engine, as you would imagine, all of those uh, four conditions are satisfied by two strokes of the of the conrod and piston, and of course only. Um, two revolutions of the crankshaft. So there do become uh, many advantages in that A it is lighter and B it doesn't have many moving parts to detract from the uh, power that is obtained from it but um, I would like to describe that to you but that would take rather a long time and um, I would like to tell you about some of the developments that I did within modifying the what were then very low powered two stroke uh, engines. So I'll leave that till part two and um, uh, with that sort of very brief explanation of um, the workings of um, a four-stroke engine. I'll um, I'll leave it until next time. So until then, until part two. Goodbye.